an arrest has been made in a homicide investigation that took place earlier this month. Phoenix police say 34-year-old Thomas Harvey was taken into custody yesterday. He's accused of killing 33-year-old William Kane. That body was found September 9th in the backyard of a vacant home near 22nd Street in Fillmore. An autopsy confirmed that he died from trauma and homicide investigators were able to tie Harvey to the crime after they call an exhausting search. He faces a charge of second degree murder. A week ago today, an ASU West student walked into her classroom on campus and was stabbed at random by a student. Luckily, people intervened and they helped that victim. Fox 10's Nicole Christine spoke to one person who helped stop that attacker and she joins us live now with his message. This was such a random attack. Such a random attack, and John and Ellen, it's just a, such a sad story. Luckily, Myra is going to be okay, but court documents, they tell this story of a 19-year-old student who was planning an attack and chose the victim, her classmate, Mara, because she seemed like, quote, an easier target. Now, as you mentioned, luckily, there were several fellow classmates who stepped in, likely saving Mara's life, and we spoke to one of those classmates tonight as he played out the entire scary situation for us. I've never seen anything like this, and I hope I never do again. ASU West sophomore Matthew McCormick says he was settling into class last Thursday when he heard his classmate Mara scream and realized she was being stabbed. In that moment, um, I didn't really have a thought going through my head. I just knew I felt compelled to do something. Police say fellow student Casey Sloan stabbed Mara twice before McCormick was able to intervene. As she was going for a third attack, I was able to grab her wrist and apprehend her at that point before, before uh, further damage could be done. Mara was taken to Banner Thunderbird Hospital and underwent surgery for stab wounds to her tricep as well as her rib cage area where the knife cut into her spleen. She's back home now but has a long recovery ahead. McCormick says he was not the only person in class to step in and help Mara. It was a great job by everybody that was in that room, uh, by the EMTs, the paramedics and the police. Everybody responded really, really well. Um, 911 calls were pretty instantaneous. Uh, everybody seemed pretty locked in and knew what to do. Ann McCormick says he hopes to meet Mara's family soon, but for now, hopes for a full recovery for his classmate. We miss you. Um, to you and your family, I pray for your return, and uh, I am just so, so thankful that your family is able to remain whole through this tragedy. A sweet message there from a classmate that Mara's family is now calling a hero. Now Sloan is facing several felony charges in connection to this stabbing, including attempted murder in the first degree. At her first court, court appointment appearance, the judge compared her actions to that of a school shooting, saying she's a danger to the public, and her bond was set at $250,000 cash only. Reporting tonight at ASU West, Nicole Christine, Fox 10 News. Incredible. Nicole, thank you. Early fall heat wave, it is impacting local sports, many leagues and high school teams. They start their seasons tonight and tomorrow. But our extreme heat means that some of those games, they're on hold. Fox 10's Brian Webb is live with more. Brian. Yeah, what a bummer, right? Thousands of little kids getting ready for their first big game of the season. But because of this heat, many of those games will be postponed and others will be played when it's very, very hot. Little Leaguers stopped in their tracks. The first games of the fall season postponed due to heat. Kamaya Beal is a parent and coach. They are beyond bummed. They had both of my parents coming in from California this weekend. But, you know, we explained to them, their dad being an athlete as well, that, you know, health and safety always comes first. It's the start of the season for the Arcadia Sports Central Leagues. 104 teams playing soccer and flag football. But with weather topping 110 degrees, the smart move may be to sit this one out. When we saw 112 to 114 and our football plays in between 12 and 6 p.m., we were like, uh, is it worth it to risk these kids possibly getting some type of heat injury? 
This weekend's high school football and flag football games in Scottsdale and Mesa are still on the schedule, but played under the heat protocol with a priority on safety. Usually by the time we reach 7 o'clock, because the sun goes down, it's still hot, but the heat index drops because of the sunlight, so then we'll be able to play the game. It's not only the players, but the parents, coaches, referees, fans, and workers who need to be considered. But it is hard sometimes because we deal with competitors, whether it be on our campus or teams that we're playing, that say, I grew up here and we played in worse, but it's just, it's, it's not a fight you want to have. Sometimes the game must go on, other times the best call is to call it off. But that doesn't mean the weekend has to be a total loss. Thinking about maybe trying to get my team together, you know, to meet for ice cream or frozen yogurt. Just do something to still get the kids together. Yeah, there's always ice cream, right? Those Saturday morning soccer games will be played. It's the afternoon games that will be postponed, and that may mean teams will have to play on Saturdays and Sundays, both in the weeks ahead. Live in Phoenix, Brian Webb, Fox 10 News.